Joining me now is the incumbent member of parliament from Tutukudi, Kanimori Karunanidhi. Uh, she's here at her Tutukudi DMK office. Is this this is like your campaign war room? This is the place where you've got all your cadre waiting for you here at Tutukudi every day. Yeah, this is our um, election office, and uh, this is the DMK party office in Tutukudi, and we have. Uh, and all the cadres meet here and then we have some discussions about what to do the, every day. You know, what's the defining theme about Tutukudi 2024? I'm sure there are local issues, but there also seems to be a larger theme as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, which is, can the BJP change the old Dravidya narrative of DMK versus AIDMK? There seems to be a threat to that DMK, AIDMK seesaw. You really think so? I don't think so because I still think this election is uh, between the DMK and the AI ADMK. I don't think, uh, uh, I think people are under the wrong impression because BJP has got a few seats in the assembly election and I think uh, it's only because uh, they were in alliance with the AI ADMK and uh, I don't think the BJP would be able to win even one seat in uh, this election. You're saying they're not going to win even one seat, but the Prime Minister has been on a major push in the state and his target has been family rule of the DMK. He's been taking on the dynasty line and corruption allegations against the DMK. Dynasty is a weak link for the DMK, isn't it? See, you can, if you come from a political family, and if you uh, want to get into politics, I don't deny the fact that the first step is much more easier than the, uh, anybody else who wants to get into politics. But if you want to stay in politics, if you want to be around, then people have to accept you for who you are, the work you do, and uh, what you believe in. So that doesn't come easy. So you don't think the Prime Minister's accusations is going to cut ice with the voters? No, I don't think the BJP is in a position actually to you know point fingers at anybody else because uh, there are many so-called dynasts in uh, BJP and uh, I think uh, most of the royal families in uh, India have been given seats by the BJP. So we shouldn't be talk they shouldn't be talking about uh, dynastic politics. And uh, your uh, first question was about if is the Dravidian narrative being changed here. I don't think that can ever happen in Tamil Nadu because uh, people believe that, you know, religion is a very personal thing. I'm not saying people are not religious here. People are very religious. You have temp people thronging temples and, you know, very religious and spiritual. But they understand that there is a difference between uh, religion and, uh, you know, uh, what they need and what their aspirations are. They don't think that uh, their answers to religion comes from a government. They expect uh, development, they expect uh, jobs, they expect uh, you know better uh, facilities, uh, health uh, sector has to be better and uh, industries have to come and development is more important. That is what people expect from uh, a government, not uh, the government to come and protect religion, which has been around for centuries and I don't think anybody needs to come and protect it. You are saying that there has to be a positive concrete agenda which looks at development and other issues which is beyond religion. Important point that you make there but I want to take another issue as well. You've been very closely associated with the INDIA alliance getting and speaking to leaders. One of the accusations that observers point out towards the INDIA alliance is while it has a strong anti-Narendra Modi agenda or an anti-BJP agenda, it doesn't offer a positive concrete solution or a positive concrete face as a challenger to Mr. Modi or a sol alternative. Is there, is that the inherent weakness, not having a strong prime ministerial face? May not be in a state like Tamil Nadu, but across the rest of the country. See, uh, I really don't understand why everybody is talking about it uh, in this election. Because in India, we've seen and faced uh, and come across so many elections without a Prime Minister candidate. And after the elections, we've elected the Prime Minister candidate and this is not the first time. So why is it suddenly becoming an issue here? Because one party has made elections, uh, you know, into a... Uh, uh, an agenda which is only focused around one person and that is 
completely against democracy that is completely no party can uh, you know revolve around just one single person uh, and that is wrong also so uh, i really don't understand why this is coming up again and again this is a narrative which bjp is trying to set and uh, you cannot say that we do not have a narrative we don't have a, a single prime ministerial candidate yes i agree but uh, they will, uh, will be elected after the elections but the narrative is that we want a secular country we want a free country we want freedom of expression for you also especially journalists uh you know they practically which hunted and uh, we need a country which believes in the constitution the electoral bonds the supreme court of india has called it unconstitutional uh, and uh, i think this is uh, a completely shocking new form of uh, corruption uh, the electoral bonds and uh, i think the pr- prime minister has no right to be talking about any other corruption this is a it's a completely different kind of corruption it's just not corruption uh, you know about money this is co- corruption to power this corrupt i mean sending people uh, threatening people with cases uh, sending uh, journalists sending uh, opposition leaders uh, to jail you know uh, without uh, any bail date uh, you are threatening people this is uh, corruption of power okay as you say that ma'am uh, just want to focus on center state equations for a bit we've had a confrontational equation between chennai and delhi uh, in terms of political differences however in a constituency like tutukudi you have seen several uh, projects being implemented from uh, the rocket launch site etc which has had cooperation between center and state uh, uh, do you believe that political differences can be put aside given the political context of india and i am assuming that while it may be very different in a state like tamil nadu in the north of india it seems like the india alliance is sticky if there is going to be two different administrations again in delhi and chennai is it possible to put political differences aside to evolve a model of cooperative governance and who would the onus be on for that no if you need to have a cooperative model i think uh, the union government has to respect the rights of the state government and uh, we have to agree that we belong to you know two different ideologies and we don't have to toe the line of the uh, union government always and uh, and i'd like definitely like to differ uh, that uh, you believe that the bjp might come back and i think uh, the india alliance has a very good chance and even uh, in the northern part of the country i think people are realizing that they don't have jobs uh, you know and uh, they they were promised uh, to double the income of uh, the farmers which ne- has never happened farmers are agitating they are protesting because uh, msp was promised and it was never delivered and uh, there are so many other issues uh, you know absolutely no development and uh, people are realizing that uh, religion cannot uh, replace all that okay as you make that point i have a last couple of questions now uh, first of all give me a prediction not for tamil nadu because you'll say 40 on 40 with tier and puducherry but give me a prediction for india you seem confident of india india alliance coming through bjp says 400 plus do you have a prediction in mind for india i i mean yeah. india and india no uh, uh, if uh, india comes then it's a good prediction for india okay so you say that now i want to one last question and this has been lagging uh, i mean nagging a lot of people for a long time you your entry into politics some would trace back to your father's arrest in 2001 which triggered uh, and then eventually 2006 you became a rajya sabha mp where do you see yourself in future there are complicated power equations in the dmk uh, how do you see your own future is there a power struggle within the party no i don't think there is a power struggle or anything um, there is space for everybody and uh, I think uh, I'm doing my work. Let us see. You you are seen as the undisputed woman face of the DMK. Seem to have a strong ideological ground. A lot I of people. I really don't understand what is this woman face. I've never heard a journalist say that you know you're the male face of the party. I I don't know why this keeps coming up. You know that it's a woman's face, woman face, woman face to a party. I'm a party worker. I'm a party cadder, and I'm a part of this party. and i don't want to be seen as a woman or a man I, i'm i think uh, 
uh, I would be uh, happy to be called uh, as a DMK leader or a, a DMK cadre. Strong, strong, strong gender neutral point there that you're making as expected from Kanimuri Karunanidhi. That's Kanimuri Karunanidhi on her way to another hectic, hot, sultry day of campaigning here in the Tutukudi parliamentary constituency. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.